five. Nice job, Grimps. What's up, guys? Today we're going to be doing some five-sided machining to make these playing dice. Really cool. We had this guy, Mike Cope, with us from Herco. Really extremely nice, genuine human being. And he wrote this awesome book, which I rec definitely recommend you guys get. You can get it at herco.com backslash five axis. And this book is like a good um, overview of five axis. Um, it'll tell you like right away um, what machine you need based on the parts you have. So you have different ways of achieving five axis. You can have your table swivel. You can have your head and your tables. You know, you can have five axis is three axis machining with two more rotary axes. So you can have those two rotary axes in your table. Um, you can have a combination or you can have them both in the head of your machine. So this book is just great because it kind of goes over all that. Um, it talks about how to program right at the machine, which, you know, really kind of relaxes you because... That's the, just the huge intimidating part is you're like, oh, I'm going to buy this really expensive machine, uh, a machine that's double the cost of a three axis machine. Am I really going to get, you know, that that extra cost back? And that that's what's really good about getting this book and reading it. And it kind of it kind of makes you have that conversation. So you don't, you don't want to just say, oh, five axis is definitely worth it. I'm going to buy it. No, it's not for everyone. But if you can afford it, you're going to be able to compete with people you're going to beat people doing three axis machining because you're just going to be so much faster and have less setups you're going to be able to run the machines longer so it's really cool so here for a six-sided dice you normally would have to orientate this six times in a three axis machine to engrave each face but by putting it in a five axis we're able to hit five of the sides and then do the six on another five axis or a three axis machine. So that's really powerful. I mean, you two setups versus six setups. And each of those setups, you haven't always have the chance of, you know, just was it not fully to bird? You're gonna put it in wrong, you're gonna be a little off. So that's the power of a five axis machine. The other thing I really recommend, and we're gonna be using this video, is this cube, which you can get uh, at herco.com backslash cube. And that helps you because you can have this with you at the machine. If you're stressed out, you squeeze it. Uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah, it'll it'll teach you how to put your right transform planes in to hit each side correctly. Um, and we're going to be programming right at the machine. I mean, that's just so powerful. If any of you guys are familiar with, you know, Herco programming right at the machine, you'll understand, you know, how powerful it is. And you guys can take your three axis programs and bring them right into your five axis machine and with transform planes, you can you could get going right away. You could be cutting chips the same day. So it's really cool. Um, <clears throat> so I just wanna kinda go over, we made all these chamfers right at the machine with the end mill. We didn't put a chamfer end mill in there um, cause we wanted to, you know, test ourselves with, you know, doing the correct transform planes and everything. So I'm gonna get a little uh, technical here. This is kind of a little bit of both. It's an overview, but it's also, you know, how do you use transform planes? So if we look at this, uh, let's see where's top. Okay, top. If you look at this top, that's basically a side one of our dice. So for the die, um, we could have pro we could have cut, machined all, qualified all the faces. But we didn't want to do that in the SOP. We wanted to index to each one because we had to go there to engrave anyway. Um, <clears throat> so for here, we would just machine. We would just do a mill face and an engraving, uh, stick lettering, if you will. And then for our um, our second side, uh, let me get this. For side two, we have to use what is called a transform plane. So what we do is we move our origin, which is here, and this is a 5 eighths. This dice has, the sides are 5 eighths long. So picture 5 sixteenths um, would be half of that. So what we do is we move, or we don't move on that, we wanna go to here, right? So we go x zero, y minus 5 sixteenths, and then z minus 5 sixteenths, and that moves our origin. But now we have to give the machine a rotation and to figure that out, we, we know it's 90 degrees to go from here to here. We have to figure out positive or negative. 
And how you do that is you use, if you look in this book, they go over it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> no, I can't find it. The right hand, the right hand rule. Now I get kind of can get into argument with people. Yeah, you're supposed to do the left hand rule because you know the G17, 18, and G19 planes. As far as Herco is um, concerned, um, we use the right hand rule, and this is where you take each finger here, and that's the positive, like your Cartesian coordinate system. That's your positive uh, linear axes. And then you have to go around one of those axes. It's the, it's the way the tool moves. So in our case, we're going from here to here. So our tool is coming this way. So that's gonna be a positive 90 degree move. So that's really all it is. And the same thing with like doing the chamfer. Um, if we wanted to chamfer this, we would just move X zero Y, instead of doing that full 5 16 we, let's say we want a 20,000th chamfer, we just move 20,000 shy of 5 16 for a transform plane, and then when we tip 45 degrees, our machine's right there, and we can program right to zero. So, I don't know, it's kinda, maybe I should do like a full video on that, but um, that's basically the basic idea of it, and you know, right away you're making dice, so that's pretty cool. Five sides of what's going to be a six-sided die. Awesome. Thank you, Mike Cope.